Hi, my name is Steve Hallfish. I'm the author of The Art and Technique of Digital Color Correction and co-author of Color Correction for Video. In this video, we're going to discuss primary color correction. Primary color correction is the first step in a traditional color correction workflow, which involves applying tonal range and color corrections to the entire raster or image. Primary color corrections usually start with spreading out the tonal range to its fullest natural extent. Images that don't have this spread appear flat or washed out. To be able to do this tonal spread well, you need to have waveform and vector scopes, which I will just call waveform monitors, and preferably external waveform monitors where you can easily and quickly see the information you want at the touch of a button. We're using the Tektronix WFM5200. Use the shadow, black, or lift control to bring down your shadows to their lowest legal level. For all forms of HD video and any form of video created digitally and viewed digitally, the level should be zero. Then bring your highlights up to 100. Some waveform monitors may have a scale from zero to 700 millivolts as a form of measurement. On a Tektronix waveform monitor, it's easy to change the measurement to a simple scale of 100. Press the config button. Use the arrow keys to navigate to the Graticules and Readouts menu. Then go over to the SDI waveform Graticules and change from normal to percent. A quick glossary item. The Graticule refers to the measurement lines and the trace is the squiggly stuff that represents the actual image. One of the advantages to good waveform monitors like the WFM5200 is that you can zoom in to the blacks and the highlights to really see fine detail. Remember that not every image has something that really deserves to be zero black or 100% white. You need to look at the image and see if there's something that should actually be deep black or bright white. If there is, then spread them out to zero and 100. Now that you've done that, you may not be happy with the overall brightness of the image. Use your gamma or midtone controls to affect the overall look. Go back and look at your shadows and highlights again after doing this to ensure that they haven't changed too much. With the tonal ranges set, see if there's an overall color bias that we want to get rid of, like a bad white balance. You may want to introduce a color bias to a neutral shot, perhaps to make it look like golden hour, or maybe you want to have the color correction tell part of the story of the shot, like making it cooler or warmer, or maybe show more contrast. All of these corrections can be done by looking at the WFM5200, which has a group of useful displays, including some patented displays that are exclusive to Tektronix. To understand how to use these waveform monitors, you have to know where the image is supposed to be in the first place. The RGB waveforms is probably the colorist's main waveform monitor of choice. The RGB parade is like a regular waveform, but it shows the relative values of each of the red, green, and blue channels. To form pure, balanced black, white, or gray, you need to have equal amounts of each channel. In an RGB waveform, if the bottom of the blue channel is higher than the bottom of the other two, then you have blue in your blacks. If the red channel is a little higher at the top of the waveform monitor than your blue or green channels, then your highlights are a little pink or red. For a lot of shots, all you have to do is line up the bottoms of each channel and the tops and you're balanced. There are exceptions, especially with shots with a lot of specific color, like a huge swath of grass, for example that shot will definitely have a stronger green channel. Also, shots with more clipping in one channel than another can be deceiving. You can see clipping as a flattening and brightening of the trace at the top or bottom of the waveform. Another way to balance colors is to look at a vector scope. On a vector scope, pure black, white, and gray, no matter how bright they are, all sit at the center of the vector scope. Generally speaking, the further from the center, the more vivid the color appears due to either saturation or value. The hue is shown by the rotation around the circle. You don't want the entire trace in the middle. That would mean it's just black and white. But as you manipulate the image while looking at the vector scope, you can see what parts need to sit closer to the center. An exclusive variation on the vector scope is Tektronix Luma Qualified Vector, or LQV. This allows you to display just a specific part of the tonal range, like just the deep shadows or just the highlights in the vector scope, which I find really helps me a lot to balance shots. Another way to balance colors is to use the diamond gamut display. With this display, blacks lie in the center where the two diamonds meet. White is at the top of the top diamond and at the bottom of the bottom diamond. If there's a green cast, it goes to the left. 
If there's a red cast, it goes to the right of the bottom diamond. Blue casts drift to the right of the top diamond. So a balanced image makes a straight line right up the middle. But look at your image. If there's a reason why the tray should be going in one of these directions, like a lot of skin tone or a lot of grass or blue sky, that's fine. But the balance of most of the image should be centered generally. Also, to stay legal, the trace must stay entirely inside the diamonds. Another big tip on primary corrections is to take advantage of the WFM 5200's ability to show you multiple displays at the same time. You can make presets of useful combinations, like an RGB parade waveform with a vector scope, or a vector scope with a Tektronix exclusive spearhead display. There's obviously a lot more to doing primary color correction than we can discuss in five minutes, but those are the basics. I hope this was helpful to you. Be sure to check out the online demo of the Tektronix WFM 5200 and the rest of the videos on the Tektronix website.